Good morning. Welcome. We'll get started shortly, in like five minutes. Just get masked up together. Um, and if you want to get your stuff together, really we don't need much at all as far as props go, except for maybe a blanket, again, if your knees get sensitive at all. Um, <clears throat> if you happen to have blocks, have them nearby, um, but you won't necessarily need them. And hope you're doing amazing. Hey Nadine, how are you doing today? We're all good now. Oh, well, I'm glad that you uh, turned the computer on, Nadine, because some days it's uh, hard to get into that place, right, where it's like, oh, okay, okay. But then once, now you're here, now you're in. <laughs> so yes, we'll work through some goo today, that's for sure. Hey, Peggy, how you doing? And I'll read something. So last night in class, I read uh, just a random part of this book. And uh, I did a post earlier today in the group that just summarized it. Really awesome stuff. Eckhart Tolle, if you don't read them yet, scope them out if you uh, have interest in delving into yourself a little more. So I thought that I would just read another little section here and yeah, it's just all of his work to me. It's like you can just read it again and again and again, and you're always going to be able to integrate it in a new way um, or in a deeper way or perhaps even a more profound way. So uh, good morning, Suzanne. Hey, Bev. So I'll read this, <clears throat> and this is just what came up for this morning. Okay, No rhyme or reason, except that we're all connected in this community. So this is what came through for all of us today. Negativity is not intelligent. It is always of the ego. Whenever you are in a negative state, there is something that, you, that wants the negativity, that perceives it as pleasurable, or that believes it will get you what you want. Otherwise, who would want to hang, out, hang on to negativity, make themselves and others miserable, and create disease in the body? So whenever there is negativity in you, if you can become aware at that moment that there is something in you that takes pleasure in it or believes it has a useful purpose, you are becoming aware of the ego directly. The moment this happens, your identity has shifted from ego to awareness. This means the ego is shrinking and awareness is growing. I'll read it again because it's a lot in, in just a few words. It's a lot of content, right? Um, but also, we talk about this stuff in class all the time. <laughs> so I'll read this one more time and then we'll, <clears throat> we'll dive in. Negativity is not intelligent. It is always of the ego. Whenever you are in a negative state, there is something in you that wants the negativity, that perceives it as pleasurable, or that believes it will get you what you want. Otherwise, who would want to hang on to negativity? make themselves and others miserable, and create disease in the body. 
So whenever there is negativity in you, if you can be aware at that moment that there is something in you that takes pleasure in it or believes it has a useful purpose, you are becoming aware of the ego directly. The moment this happens, your identity has shifted from ego to awareness. This means the ego is shrinking and awareness is growing. Lovely. All right. So taking from that what you will, whatever may resonate with you today. Good morning, Silping. Thanks for joining in. So we will uh, we'll dive in. Yeah, we'll get started. We're starting standing today. Nice Tuesday morning flowy flow. So let's come to the top of the mat, feet hip distance apart. And just nice and easy, press down through the feet. Let's reach out through the hands and then up to the ceiling, drawing a breath in. And to the heart, a breath out. All the way out and up, breathing in. And to the heart, breathing out. One more time, out and up. And down to the heart. Good, let's interlace through the fingers. Knuckles underneath the chin will heat up the body here. You could keep feet hip distance if you prefer them together, go for it, okay? So we inhale, the elbows flare out and up. And then through the mouth we exhale, the elbows come together, the head gently leans back. Inhale, open those lungs. Exhale, squeeze elbows together. Keep going. Notice the spaces that are hanging on to any tension here through this breath, through this movement. And just do your best to fill yourself up and empty yourself out. Notice the sticky spaces and breathe into them. Find the expansion. And then really ring it out on those exhales. Relax the head, relax the neck. Exhale, squeeze the breath out. Keep going. Move through the stickiness. Strong legs. Let the arms feel natural in these movements and work on the breath. Stay with it. Two more. Last one. And relax the head, relax the arms, then circle out to side with hands, up to ceiling. 
back down into the heart. If feet were apart, bring them together if that's available. Squeeze through your legs. Inhale, hands reach straight up. Exhale, lean to the right, reaching with those hands, and then up through center, reach to the left, center, reach to the right, center, reach to the left, try to keep breath in and out of the nose here, center, to the right, center, to the left, center, right, stay with it. Relax the shoulders, keep the arms strong. Almost there. Stick with the breath, stick with the movement. center and down through heart center good so hinging at the hips keep your legs straight hands are either wrapping around the backs of your thighs or coming down to the backs of the calves it doesn't really matter but keep your spine feeling nice and straight okay your feet could step hip distance apart as well if that feels easier for you breathing in Open the heart like you're reaching the heart forward and then breathing out, arch the back up like a cat pose. Inhale, look forwards. Exhale into the cat. Keep going. Breath is in and out of the nose again for this. And we arch that back. Do your best to keep legs straight. Again, grabbing on where is easiest for you. Stick with it, keep going, breathing in, and out. Strong legs. Keep going. Use the breath. Stronger in the legs. Solid foundation. Keep them straight. Feel the abs. Two more in. Last one. Exhale. Good. When you're ready, fingers reach forwards, bend into your knees, lift up through your heels, awkward chair, breathing in and out. Feel the softening of shoulder blades. Feel the strengthening of your legs as they squeeze together, the lengthening of your spine as your sit bones get heavier, your navel draws in. Breathing in and out, hold. Focus on spinal length. Your legs are strong, your body is warm. Let that back have some space. One more breath in. And then breathing out, let your heels come down. We fold forwards, fingertips touch the ground. And then just bend one knee and then the other. Just wiggle your hips a little bit here. Good. After a nice little wiggle, come to stillness. Walk your hands over to the right. Nice little stretch here. And then back to center and walk your hands over to the left. Good. 
and back to center. Looking forwards, half back pose. And we'll bring a nice forward fold here. So keep your legs nice and long as best as you can to straighten your legs. But of course, if you need to, bend your knees so your belly can touch thighs. Hands can wrap around backs of legs. Let your head get heavy. Just do your best to keep those legs as straight and strong as you can this morning. So we can work on that beautiful lower body integration so the upper body can feel a little bit more freedom. You might get a bit more shake and heat moving through the body. That's a good thing too. Breathing in and out. Okay. From here, release your hands so fingertips are down onto the ground. And staying pretty light on your fingertips as best as you can, okay? So we're going to bring some movement into the body and we'll use a fairly moderate pace, okay? But the first few rounds will keep pretty slow. So do your best to stay on your fingertips. Bring a breath in and a breath out. Right foot floats up and back. Hip height, toes point down. Breathing in. And then breathing out, just bend into your left knee so right toes come down to the mat in the lunge. Hands reach up. Breathe in. And then hands come down. Breathe out. We'll be on our fingertips. And then we're doing a little hop switch. So the right foot comes forwards now. And the left foot's back in the lunge. Okay? And then the hands reach forwards and up. Breathing in. And then the hands come down, breathing out. And we'll just stay with those hop switches to transfer, okay? So then left foot forward, right foot back. We reach up. And then we reach down. Switch. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, come down. Switch. And come down. Switch. And you don't have to have super long lunge here either. Make it accessible for you. Okay? Switch. So it could be little hops. Okay? Your back knee could even stay bent if you need. But maintain that movement and that integrity through your body. And practice those nice little hop switches. This is so good for the brain, for the body. Mm-hmm. It's great for cardio. We're almost there. So just finding the edge that suits you. It's not about having perfect form. We want to simply be aware of ourselves. Let the heat move through. We're almost there. Really great for building that strength in the hands and the core. Good, so next time hands are down and you're hop switching, so right foot is forwards. Once your right foot's forwards, left foot floats up hip height, breathing in. And then left foot comes down beside the right, breathing out. Fingertips are on the mat, bending one knee and then the other, just wiggle out those hips. Good, okay. Coming into stillness, look forwards, half back. And then we'll exhale, fold to plant hands, hop or walk back, move through our first flow of class. So finding that plank, moving through your chaturanga, coming forward into up dog or cobra, and then downward dog, hips up and back. Nice little wiggle of the hips here. Complete breath in and out. Feel your quadriceps engage, so it's like the backs of your knees are reaching for the wall behind. Looking forwards, bend the knees, hop or walk to the hands. Half back, breathing in. And breathing out, let's step the left foot back 
in a lunge. Hands sweep forwards and up. Breathing. Breathing out, warrior two, left heel drops, left hand back, right hand forwards. Nice full breath in here. And then left hand down to that left leg or outer left leg. Right hand reaches back. Good. And then slowly straighten that right leg. And then reach right hand forwards, forwards, forwards. And then maybe onto that right leg or onto the floor inside right foot. Left hand to ceiling, triangle pose, Trikonasana. Breathing in. And breathing out. Okay, so utilizing that transition for a few rounds of breath, it's not about going fast, but we do want to stay integrated through that lower body. Push big toe on right foot down. Mm hmm And then inhale all the way up to that exalted warrior. So like stay straight, left hand to the leg, right hand reaches back. Good. When you're ready, let's come forwards. Breathing out into triangle. Remember that right hand could be on the right leg. Make it nice and easy. Inhale all the way up. Oh, big stretch. And then next breath in, back down into triangle. From triangle, bend into right knee so you're in side angle. So your right elbow could be on top of the right thigh. Okay? Full breath in, or right arm is inside, right knee, palm is on the ground. Full breath out. One more in. As you're ready, on breath out, left hand forwards and down to the ground, right hand outside, right knee. Lift the back heel up and step forwards. Look forwards, half back. And then we'll exhale, the right foot steps back. So we find our lunge here, breathing in to sweep hands forwards and up, tapping into that nice crescent lunge. And then we'll find our warrior two, left hand forward, right hand back, right heel drops. Breathing in, breathing out. And then that right hand comes down onto that right leg, left hand reaches back. Mm-hmm. And then we'll straighten the left leg, find that length. And then slowly, left hand starts to sweep forwards, forwards, forwards. Hand could be on left leg or onto the mat inside left foot. Right hand reaches to ceiling, tapping into triangle here. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, strong legs. So really set yourself up in that foundation. Feel amazingly integrated here. And then we'll lift up into that exalted warrior, right hand to the leg, left hand reaches back. And then come back into your triangle. Wherever is easiest for you. Breathing in to come back up, strong legs. Lean back and to triangle. Follow your breath. One more time up. Breathing in. Good. Find that strength and stability. And then coming back into that triangle. Pausing here. And then bending into left knee. So left knee is outside left shoulder or that left elbow could be onto the thigh palm face up. Breathing in here. Breathing out. Last one in. And then right hand forwards and down. Unhook back heel, left hand outside left foot. Right foot steps forwards. Look forwards, half back. And then exhale, fold to plant hands, hop or walk back. Go through your flow. So see what's working for you right now. Strong and steady with your breath, with your movements. Good. 
complete breath in here. And out. Good, okay, so in downward dog, step the feet about hip distance apart if you're not already there. And then the hands are going to come a little wider, so about as wide as your yoga mat with those hands, okay? Now, from here, we're just doing a few little like dive push-ups, okay? So the elbows flare out, and we aim our head down, and then we push up. And we flare our elbows out, aim head down, and push up, okay? Three more. Going down and coming up. Your head does not have to touch the ground, just practice moving in that direction. Good, you got it. One more time. And push up. And hang out, downward dog. Okay, step your big toes to touch and walk your feet a little closer in. Readjust your hands to shoulder width if you haven't already. Belly presses towards the thighs and that right leg sweeps up and back, long and strong. Full inhale, full exhale. Good, now work on straightening your left leg and then open and stack your right hip on left. Your leg is still straight, both legs are. And then reach your right toes higher to the ceiling. Breathing in and breathing out. Maintain the equal strength through both arms and then slowly right toes start to come back down. Let your hips naturally get neutral and square off. Right foot forwards, lunge. Take your time. Breathing in, hands forwards and up. Breathing out, warrior two. Good. From here, right hand is reaching forwards to the ground, ahead of the right toes, left leg floats up. You could use your block here if you need. We're doing 10 pulses with that left leg. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Holding here. Optional to bend left knee, grab left ankle with the left hand. Breathing in, breathing out. And then from here, if you grab the ankle, let it go. Left hand comes down, hips square off, fingertips are on the mat. Left toes come down. Let's do a hop switch here, left foot forward right foot back, find your lunge, and then sweep both hands forwards and up, and land in your warrior two. Awesome, so getting yourself nice and situated here, knee above ankle on left side, right heels dropped, left hand is reaching forward in front of that left foot, right foot and leg float up, and we hold. Good, then we're doing 10 pulses here, with this right leg. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome. Holding. Optional. Bend right knee. Grab ankle. Pause. Full breath in, full breath out. Good. And then from here, release ankle, right hand comes down, let your hips get neutral. The right toes are stepping back long in a lunge. Good. Now plant your hands, make sure those right toes feel solid. Left foot's going up and back, three limb dog, all the way up. Start to open your hips so left hip stacks on right and reach those left toes higher to the ceiling, maintain strength across the chest, shoulders, and in through the arms and the hands. And then nice and easy, start to neutralize through your hips and just bring the left toes down by the right. Breathing in and breathing out. One more breath in. Good. 
And then when you're ready, next inhale, plank. Go through a flow, lower chaturanga, nice and strong. Pull forward and up, cobra up dog. And then down dog. Breathing in, back to plank. Breathing out, flow it out. Keep going. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower. Up dog. And down dog. Good. Two more rounds. Plank. Inhale. Lower down. Exhale. Float up. Breathing in. Float back. Breathing out. One more round. Full inhale, full exhale in your down dog. Good. And then just lower the knees down. Untuck toes, chill in child's pose just for a moment. Okay, from child's pose, we'll keep the elbows down on the mat. So elbows are rooted underneath the shoulders. Hips are stacked above the knees, okay? Your hands, oh, we'll back up a little bit more. So elbows and shoulders are aligned. Palms can be flat down, or you can have hands interlaced. Whatever feels best for you. From this place, toes are tucked, knees and hips lift up. Dolphin pose. Breathe it in, breathe it out. Find a place where you can settle a little bit here by pressing your elbows into the ground and find lots of space across the front of the chest. Let your knees bend, maybe walk your toes a little closer in, make it slightly easier. Okay, so working through shoulders, working all around the ribs, and now working into hips. Right foot sweeps up and back, breathing in, toes to the ceiling. And then breathing out, right knee bends into the chest. Good, and then keeping your right knee bent, draw big circles over to the right, circling that knee around, stirring in through that hip socket, and then reverse, go the opposite way. Mm -hmm. And then come into stillness, right toes down. Left leg floats up to ceiling, breathing in, stay strong in the arms. And then breathing out, left knee bends into chest. And then roll through that hip socket by rolling that knee in big circles over to the left. And then go the opposite way. Move through that gunky stuff. Awesome. Coming into stillness, left toes come down, breathing in, and then knees come down, breathing out. Untuck toes, child's pose, just for a sec, relax. And rolling up to a seat. We'll give the wrists a little break for just a bit longer. So coming on to the left elbow and the left side of your body. So we're lengthwise on the mat. Your left hand, it might need to just like shift position to keep you feeling stable. But if you can, just reach the left fingers over to the right. And then we're lifting the body. So we're in a side plank here. Okay, so just do your best. Right leg floats up, right arm floats away, and then exhale, crunch, knee and arm together. Inhale, reach away, and crunch, and reach, and crunch, reach, crunch. A few more. Stay strong in that bottom leg. Mm-hmm, isn't that fun? <laughs> and then when you're ready, one more. And crunch and ha, oh, let the hips come down. Awesome. From here, we'll just switch it up. So come over to the other side. So right elbows down on the ground. 
palm is nice and rooted. And of course, if you're feeling really not super hot today, you can always just practice lifting the hips up if holding the side plank is too much, okay? So coming up into your side plank when you're ready, left leg lifts, left arm reaches overhead, and then crunch, and reach, and crunch, and reach. You got it. Oh yeah. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Good. One more. And crunch. And come down. Holy. Sweep the feet forwards. Bend the knees. Relax over the thighs for a moment. Complete breath in and a complete breath out. Okay, rolling up to a seat, we'll work those abs a little bit. So walk the feet in towards you. Hands are hanging onto the shins. Now you might need your blanket underneath your hips, especially if hips are uh, pretty tight. But otherwise, now we can be here. Do what works best for you, okay? You could leave your feet on the ground, that will make it easier, or you can have your feet hovering, okay? So we'll move with the breath. We're inhaling to open the arms, open the chest, so toes could be down, and then the exhale is hands come in. Or the other option is we inhale, open out, toes reach out, and exhale, hug it in and keep the toes hovering. Inhale, open, exhale, hug. Inhale, open, exhale, hug. Stick with it. Keep that chest right. Use the breath. Let that heat move through. Notice any areas that feel really kind of like stuck or rigid. Just observe. Make little modifications. Mm -hmm. Stay with that breath. Keep moving. Keep going. Feel those spaces start to open up. We're almost there here. One more and hug. Good. Feet come down. Let's open the feet wider than the hips. So about as wide as the shoulders. Okay, and just see what happens. You may need to use a hand or both behind you, but we're aiming to reach hands forwards and let the hips lift up. So now we're in a squat. You might need to wiggle around, adjust the angle of your toes, see what's up. And then hands come down to the ground, hips lift up. Okay, so working with the breath a little bit here, bring your feet together with the heels towards each other and the toes apart like a ballerina, okay? If your heels can touch, cool. If they can't, cool. Do what works best for you. Fingertips are touching down. Inhales through nose, exhales through mouth. Inhale, exhale, bend your knees. Let the heels lift up, we squat. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, come down. Keep going.
keep going. Last one up and stay up. Relax the upper body. Adjust your toes so they're facing forwards and just gently rock the body side to side. And bending through the knees nice and easy. Come back up to standing. Okay. So, stepping wide on your yoga mat, getting into that nice four stance or goddess position. So, toes point out, knees are above the ankles. We just warm the legs up real nice so we can pause into this space with the lower body. Now, using breath again, in through nose, out through mouth. Arms are up like a cactus, palms can face forwards or towards you, whatever feels better. Twist to the left, inhale, exhale right. In left, out right. So keep going, choose the pace that suits you. Stay nice and stable in your lower body and really give yourself that opportunity to wring out the gunk. stuff trying to hang on ring it out move the gunk out of the lungs move it out from around your heart move it from your ribs your shoulders yeah and then notice what are you welcoming in yeah what do you welcome into your experience probably something along the lines of compassion love health wellness mm -hmm. when it comes down to it all we all want the same stuff. We want to be well, we want to be safe, we want to be healthy, we want to be strong, and really we want connection with ourselves and the people, the nature, our environment, yeah? So noticing those connections which you're drawing in. Anything based in fear or control, you know is straight from the ego. Let it go. Those are not helpful thought patterns. There is no need to enforce. Mm -hmm. We already are the force. Yeah, so feel it within. Keep going. It's your breath that drives everything through your mind, through your body. What are you integrating? Mm -hmm. Keep going. stance, horse stance, hands onto the knees, and just dip the right shoulder to the midline, and then the left, and then right, and left. One more, and the left, good. 
And then we'll do our nice stretch back through neutral. Right hand reaches in front of the belly. Left hand reaches to the right. And then switch. Left in front, right hand reaches left. Good. Switch. Switch. One more each side. Switch. And switch. Good. And goddess stance. Chin mudra with the hands, index finger and thumbs touching. Pausing. Breathing. And then hands down to the knees. Straighten your legs when you're ready. Toes face forwards. And then slightly out with the heels. Hinging at the hips. We fold forwards. If available, fingers interlace behind the back. Knuckles reach up to the ceiling. And slowly undo through the hands. If they were behind your back, we'll look forwards, modified half back. And then exhale, stand up. Good. Heel toe your feet in. And then just shake them out. Okay, so pose of the week is headstand. So we are going to work on headstand. But for today's variation, for one of them at least, Let's have our mat width-wise against a wall. Now, if you can't do that for your setup at home, please don't stress out about it because it's not a huge deal, okay? Just go to the place you can. I'll adjust my screen a little bit here. Okay, so when you're ready, once you're all set up, and again, if your mat can't be against the wall or a little bit away from the wall width-wise, please don't stress and you can still follow the same stuff. Okay, so otherwise we're going to face the wall in a wide leg standing position. Now make sure your mat's not right against the wall, okay? It's gonna be like a few, like six inches away. And then back up your feet so they're towards the back edge of your, the new back edge of your mat, okay? Furthest from the wall. And then hit your hips and we come forward into a fold. Okay, so now a few things can happen here. One is you can just continue to enjoy your fold. But something else that can happen, and we've warmed up the legs a lot, is the palms can come down, they root underneath the shoulders, elbows bend, and maybe the crown of your head comes down to the mat, okay? So this is working into headstand through awareness of flexibility in the legs, but strengthen the core. So if your head touches the floor, you might just be able to float those legs up and hold the toes wide, okay? But notice, at no point do you jump or hop, okay? That's one of the most amazing elements of this, and if you've never floated up in anything before, just be aware. It's going to feel new, and it's probably going to feel a bit scary, okay? Because it's, like, new. So be kind, and just go to the place you can. If headstand's part of your practice, you might just bring those legs totally together and pause here for as long as is available. And if it's not quite happening, don't worry about it. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of time, a lot of patience. Yeah, that's the beauty of this practice of life, right? To me, that's all yoga is. It's just a life practice. It's integrated through every moment of every day, just like meditation. Breathing in, breathing out. Now, too, of course, you can keep holding your headstand, but if you're not quite in your headstand yet, practicing getting your head on the ground is going to be a huge thing, and even practicing taking your hands off of the ground with your head down can be nice too, just to get the brain used to you having weight 
on your head and like this is you're already upside down you know you don't need to have your legs up in the air to be in an inversion you're already here we go into inversions every time we're in downward dog couple more cycles of breath and if you want to practice getting on your heels and still you feel heavy you can practice bending one knee and you might find a little more lightness there or bend the other knee Okay, now this is from flexibility and strength integrated together. So sometimes you can really surprise yourself with how strong you can be here. When you've had enough, slowly hands are down. Look forwards towards the wall and then just slide your feet in towards each other. Come up to standing. Cool. So we'll come towards the top edge of the mat or whatever. <laughs> From here, we're feet, our feet are hip distance apart, and we're bending through the knees. So we can bring the bum down to the ground, and then roll back, hips up, and then roll back. Feet are coming down. We're coming up to standing, right? So this is like, oh, we usually get stuck here. So if that happens, use your hand or reach your hands further forwards and come up. We're just doing two more, okay? So maybe you want to practice with your feet wider, okay? That can be even easier. So feet wider than the shoulders, lowering your squat. Notice how much you can use your hands, and then roll back, little tumble back, and then up, and forwards and up, yeah? And then down, roll back, and forwards and up. And then down, nice little roll. And then we'll stay in this little roll and adjust into a plow pose. So hands come to the lower back, elbows wiggle in towards each other, tops of the feet touch the ground if available. And we pause. Enjoy that beautiful stretch all through the back side of the body. Maybe you can bend your knees around your ears. And from plow, moving into shoulder stand. So again, make sure your shoulder blades are closer together. You can feel the weight onto your shoulders, not on your neck. Hands walk up the back in the direction of shoulder blades, and then toes reach up to the ceiling. Strong in the legs. Steady breath. When you're ready from here, entering back into plow pose. And then using your hands to help you. So bringing hands onto the ground, roll yourself down nice and smooth. 
Eventually, knees into chest, give yourself a hug. Rock side to side. Okay, coming into stillness from here. Shoulder blades are flat. Let's draw the hands behind the head and pick up your head. So using your hands to hang onto your skull and just give yourself a nice bit of traction here by gently drawing your skull away from the body. And just breathe in and breathe out. And slowly lay the head back down, hands on the belly, and just rock your head side to side. Coming into stillness, arms out to the sides like a cactus, right thigh crosses over left, Hips move to the right of the yoga mat about six inches or so. Knees pull into chest and then over and down to the left. If your right shoulder is really tight, you may want your right hand onto your um, hip or the right ribs. If you can, work on that right shoulder getting down to the ground. Maybe looking over to the right, if it feels okay on your neck. You could even take your right hand behind your head. Giving yourself just a little support. Looking back to center, knees come up through center, undo through legs, hips get neutral, make sure shoulder blades are still neutral. Left thigh crosses over right, we move hips about six inches to the left, knees draw into chest and then over and down to the right. That left hand might want to come towards the left hip. Maybe you can look over to the left. The knees are on the ground, or the left knee that is. Notice your breath. Looking back to center when you're ready, bring those legs back to center, neutral through the hips. Breathing in, breathing out, just chill out for a sec.
scan through your body. Notice if there's any stickiness still hanging on anywhere in the mind or anywhere in the body. Gather any last little bits and start to bring them to your navel center, that fiery core in the solar plexus. So gathering everything in that solar plexus, lengthen out through your legs. Head and shoulders float up, hands reach forwards, legs float, and then crisscross the ankles. Mm -hmm. Send any of that tension from your core down and out your legs, through your feet. Use your breath. Let the fire burn that stuff away and let your movement send that lovely, yucky stuff. Yeah, the heavy gunk stuff out through your legs and out through the feet. Oh, yeah. A couple more breaths in. And out. One more. And out. Relax. Use the breath, fill your belly. And exhale, send the breath out your legs, out through your feet. And continue to settle in here, breathing directly into that solar plexus, feed your fire. And exhale, send anything no longer serving down at the legs, releasing through your feet. Continue to focus and breathe. Feel your body softening and also feel that strength building, that inner fire, that inner confidence expanding within you. Continuing to soften in this Shavasana, I'll read the piece from the beginning of class. So just allowing whatever to resonate that does today. Negativity is not intelligent. It is always of the ego. Whenever you are in a negative state, there is something in you that wants the negativity, that perceives it as pleasurable, or that believes it will get you what you want. Otherwise, who would want to hang on to negativity, make themselves and others miserable, and create disease in the body? So, whenever there is negativity in you, if you can become aware at that moment that there is something in you that takes pleasure in it or believes it has a useful purpose, you are becoming aware of the ego directly. The moment this happens, your identity has shifted from ego to awareness. This means the ego is shrinking and awareness is growing. And tapping into that growing awareness by bringing a full breath in through the body. 
Maybe a nice stretch and reach through arms and legs, fingers and toes. Eventually, knees pull into chest, giving yourself a nice hug. Rolling over to the right, pressing up into a seated position. Whatever feels comfortable for you this morning or whenever you end up seeing this video, but getting comfortable. And bringing hands on top of the heart, so stacking the hands on your heart. And becoming aware of the movement of breath through your body. The beating of your heart. the state of your nervous system. Noticing yourself fully and completely in this moment. Drawing a breath all the way in to honor your practice today. Exhaling away negative judgments. Let's draw palms to prayer, drawing a full breath in, loving acceptance into ourselves. Letting go of what no longer serves. And final inhale, loving gratitude into ourselves. And an exhale of loving gratitude for everyone else. Thank you for our practice today. Hope you feel superb. Namaste. <sighs> As per usual, let me know if there's questions or anything. I'll stick around for a couple extra minutes just in case because I know there's a delay on the video. Oh, and Al, you joined in too. Thanks everyone for being here. Lots of beautiful breath. So yes, headstand is our pose of the week this week. So of course, just like every other week, uh, we'll be practicing a whole bunch of variations uh, as well as a variety of ways to condition the body and mind to make headstand something that's approachable and something that eventually is actually quite fun, regardless of where you are in it. Yeah. Hey, Cheryl. Glad you joined in too, and Ritu joined. Thank you. Thanks, Bev. And of course, too, like when we get in these more um, challenging postures like headstand, let me know. Please feel free to send me private messages or whatever. I'm so happy to discuss, to help where I can. Um, I also do one-on-one -on -one videos as well through Zoom. So if you want to get in-depth into something, let me know. We can totally set it up. Okay. Thanks, Suzanne. Thanks, Silpeng. Thank you. Have an awesome day, everyone. Uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Um, you may have a message in your inbox from me asking if you're continuing your uh, pass, but a lot of you are already updated, so it probably doesn't really matter right now. I'm just kind of saying it for my own, <laughs> my own stuff. But anyway, all right, well, we'll be back later. Um, oh, Nadine, I just see your comment coming in. Oh, that's awesome. So your legs just went up. Isn't that so cool? It's just like, ching, just goes. Um, that's beautiful. I'm glad that that all worked out for you, Nadine, and that it's working through. And you bring up a really great point about headstand. And I mean, it can happen with anything in yoga too, but just that feeling of 
confidence and like, oh, I successfully did something, you know, it's like inversions and arm balances to me are like these beautiful keys that unlock our confidence in ways that we don't even realize is possible until we're actually doing it, you know, and it's like, holy shit, I'm upside down and I'm comfortable with it. That translates through all of life. Like how amazing is that? Thank you for sharing that, Nadine, because it's just, it's so cool. And uh, yeah, to me, that's like what the whole depth of yoga is, or at least a really main, like large component of it is like, what do we get to discover about ourselves through our own awareness when we move our body in certain ways and specific ways? Um, Ritu, what you saying? Oh, you're going to practice now. Just got back from walk. Awesome. It might take like 10 minutes to process once I end the live video, but uh, yeah, it'll be up and ready soon. So if you have any issues with that. Oh, Suzanne, I see your question. Um, knees to elbows helpful in going. Yes. If you wanted to have your um, being in tabletop pose, you mean, and getting your head down like this kind of thing. Let's see. So having elbows down and then practicing this, this can be really nice too. And we'll do lots of that stuff this week as well. We'll dive in um, probably not tomorrow morning because that's Kyle, but uh, Thursday morning and little bits tonight. But yes, absolutely, that can be helpful as well. I hope that was what you meant. Um, yeah, right. So I'll end this video now. But if there are any other questions or anything, please do let me know. And otherwise, maybe see you later tonight or again very soon. Have a sweet day. Enjoy the sunshine. Bye.